All of us living in the modern age like to think of ourselves as being pretty clever. We have the internet, we have mobile phones, and we might be about to unlock the secrets of nuclear fission. Having said that, people who lived a century ago thought they were pretty clever with the technology they had at their disposal, too. And so did the people who lived a century before them. It might even be possible that our distant ancestors were smarter than us, as you're about to see. The Lycurgus Cup would be considered beautiful no matter what period of history it had been built during. The fact that it's 1,600 years old adds to the charm. Factor in the fact that it also appears to change color depending on the lighting conditions in the room at the time, and it becomes practically miraculous. This isn't a miracle, though, and nor is it a work of futuristic technology. It's simply a phenomenal piece of glasswork. The Lycurgus Cup is made of dichroic glass, which works by accepting or reflecting light particles and therefore appears to be a different color depending on what type of light is shown at it and where that light comes from. Shine a light from behind the glass and it appears to be red. Do the same thing from the front and it's suddenly green. The ancient Romans wouldn't have had the first idea why dichroic glass worked the way that it did, but that didn't matter. It was enough for them to be able to see and understand that it worked, and they could make beautiful things with it. When you hear the words steam engine, you usually think about old trains, but the idea of a steam engine has been around a lot longer than the locomotive. Heron Alexandrinus, better known as Heron of Alexandria, came up with the invention of the steam engine during the first century. He furthered the work of the Greek inventor Tesibios, who spent most of his life working on the science and potential of compressed air. Heron's invention was the alapile, sometimes referred to as the Heron engine, a spherical device that can rotate on its axis as nozzles at either end emit steam, thus providing the engine with thrust. Water could be boiled either directly below the sphere or even inside it. He couldn't find a practical application for his invention, and so it was largely forgotten until Taku al-Din came up with a similar idea in 1577. Aldin is credited with the design of the steam engine, but unknowingly all he was doing was replicating Heron's work from 1,500 years earlier. That's not Aldin's fault, though. After so many years, he couldn't possibly have known that he was borrowing somebody else's idea. Everybody's heard of the Great Wall of China, but far more people ought to have heard of the Bhutan Palace Fortress. You'll find it in Babao in Sulawesi, but it's so big that you could actually see it from space if you could persuade Jeff Bezos to fly you up there. The Guinness Book of World Records recognizes Bhutan Palace Fortress as the single largest fortress in the world. It's over two miles long, with a consistent wall thickness of six feet. The height of the wall varies, but on average, it's a little over 12 feet tall. The history of Bhutan Palace can be traced back to the 16th century, when its construction was ordered by Sultan Bhutan III under the name of Wolio Palace. It took so long to finish the job that by the time it was complete, Sultan Bhutan V was on the throne. Aside from being incredibly huge, the fortress is also notable for being made from strange materials. The limestone blocks that make up the bulk of the construction are normal enough, but they're held together using glue made from liquid egg whites, dough, lime, and seaweed. There are two ways of interpreting our next artifact, which was found in Russia's Kaluga region during the 1990s. The first is as the fossil of an ancient sea creature known as a crinoid. The second is as a screw made by human hands. Scientists would prefer you to believe the first interpretation rather than the second, because the object is 300 million years old. The same research team who found the rock and the strange object inside it claim that they have x-rayed their discovery and found that there's a second screw shape hidden in the rock. There's some controversy around their claims, though, as they've never allowed anybody else to examine the artifact. It could be easy to dismiss the idea that it's an ancient screw and believe in the crinoid theory, but the problem in doing so is that it would be very unusual for a crinoid to reach this size. 
To those who believe in such things, the screw is evidence of either time travel or aliens visiting Earth millions of years ago. We know the crinoid idea is more likely, but wouldn't it be much more fun if it was aliens? A site as large as Borobudur Temple in Magalang, Indonesia needs a suitably large legend to cover its creation, and it has one. It's said that a whole army of monks worked together to build the gigantic 8th century temple site by hand, which, given the fact that it's made of more than 180,000 cubic feet of lava rock, seems unlikely. It's as ornate as it is massive. There are more than 500 Buddha statues and reliefs that mark the path to the top of the Steppe Pyramid site, all of which tell us what life was like during the days of Buddhist Java. Sadly, they don't tell us why it was suddenly abandoned in the 1300s, after which it stood empty and forgotten for 500 years. There's another mystery on top of that, too. The location is surrounded by active volcanoes, and there's regular seismic activity around it as well. Without anyone to look after it for five centuries, it withstood earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Not only do we not understand how Borobudur was built, but we also don't understand how it survived. Italian Renaissance master Leonardo da Vinci has a strong claim to having the greatest mind in human history. The polymath was light years ahead of his time in art, science, biology, and sculpting, and it appears that he could predict the future of military combat, too. Long before a tank ever rolled across the fields of Europe, or anywhere else in the world for that matter, da Vinci had come up with a basic idea of what they might look like. He never built a prototype based on his design, but the fundamental principles of it are sound. The da Vinci tank had space for outward-facing blunderbusses and a removable top section that could be opened to aid the vision of the driver. The wheels were probably too thin to be of any use in a muddy field, and the crank design of the axle looks faulty, but we shouldn't hold that against him. A wooden tank probably wouldn't have lasted long on the battlefield, but this design is a basic blueprint for the future. In fact, a group of engineers was able to successfully build a working model of the tank based on da Vinci's blueprints in 2010. The anemometer is a device you'll still see in use today. It's perfectly designed for measuring wind speed and direction. What you might not know about it is that its design has barely changed since the first anemometer was created in the 15th century. The process that it uses for tracking movement, measuring the rate of that movement, and then informing the observer of the results, is the same one that was created by Leon Alberti as long ago as 1450. Mr. Alberti doesn't get enough credit for that as he ought to. There was such a thing as record-keeping in the 15th century, but somehow Robert Hooke was able to claim credit for inventing the device much later than Alberti did. Wolfius came up with a similar design in 1709 and is also hailed as the originator of the idea. Having said that, it's possible Alberti's concept wasn't as original as it appeared to be. There's some evidence, albeit unproven, that the ancient Mayans had a functioning anemometer-like device several hundred years ago. Wherever its origins truly lie, it's still a phenomenal invention that stood the test of time. If you're one of the many people who use an alarm clock to wake yourself up for work or school in the morning, you might curse the inventor of the mechanical clock every day. You probably think that your curses are directed at someone who's lived and died during the past couple of centuries, but you'd be wrong. In fact, the mechanical clock was invented in China during the 8th century by Yi Qing, a noted Buddhist monk and mathematician. The clock he designed is fully functional. It just didn't look much like a clock based on our understanding of the world today. Yi Qing called his invention the water-driven spherical bird's-eye view map of the heavens, which tells us that while he might have been a mathematical genius, he didn't have a clue about naming products. He finished the design in the year 725. Although the clock doesn't have a face or any hands, it uses water to push a wheel through a single full rotation in precisely 24 hours. That means it's possible to work out the time by looking at the position of the wheel. 
You didn't have to look at it constantly, though. A bell would chime on the hour every hour to keep you appraised of the time. The history books of the Western world will tell you that an Englishman named Jethro Tull invented the seed drill in the year 1701 as a more efficient way of planting seeds. There's no doubt that Jethro Tull was a fine inventor and had an excellent band named after him. But the idea that he was the inventor of the seed drill is nonsense. Someone in ancient China beat him to the punch by more than 3,000 years. Seed drills have been around in Chinese agriculture for such a long time that the precise date of their invention is unknown. But tools that look like seed drills turn up in Chinese cave paintings around 3,500 years ago. We know that they were definitely around by the year 256 BCE at the latest because they were an essential part of the Du Qiangyan irrigation system. The idea later spread to Japan, where there are drawings of people using cattle-drawn seed drills more than 1,000 years ago. Jethro Tull didn't necessarily steal his seed drill idea from elsewhere, but to credit him with work that was originally done 2,200 years earlier is ludicrous and just a tiny bit ignorant. The seed drill isn't the only supposedly Western invention that was actually invented in China thousands of years ago. There's also the magnetic compass, which has a history that can be traced back 2,400 years. The ancient Chinese magnetic compass works in almost the same way as the compass we use today, but their inventor didn't originally devise them as navigation aids. Instead, they thought that they'd created something that would be useful in an energy channeling process similar to feng shui. This was a device that told you where to go spiritually and figuratively, not literally. It's thought that the compass was used to determine where doors and windows would best be built in houses and other properties. The compasses of the era were made from lodestone, a form of rock that's also a natural magnet and perfectly aligned with the Earth's magnetic field. The stone would be fashioned into a spoon-like shape and then placed on a bronze plate. We're not sure how many years passed before the ancient Chinese noticed that the tip of the spoon always pointed perfectly to the north, but their ancient texts also contain references to a so-called iron fish, which was always said to point south when placed into a bowl of water. Sadly, no examples of such a device have survived to the modern day. Human beings don't tend to talk about their use of the toilet very much. Because of that, most of us have never asked, or perhaps even wanted to know, when the flushing toilet was invented. Amazingly, nobody knows the answer to that question. There's some evidence that there may have been flushing toilets in India as many as 4,000 years ago although not enough evidence to be certain. We can be certain, however, that there were flushing toilets in the palace of Knossos, and the ancient Greeks built that around 3,700 years ago. The flushing system was little more than a series of earthenware pans and some running water, but it worked. By the time of ancient Rome, toilets had turned into a social gathering place. People would sit down next to their friends to defecate and chat, and then wipe their behinds clean with a bit of sponge on a stick. The sponge would then be rinsed under running water and put back so somebody else could use it. It's thought that this is where the colloquial expression, getting the wrong end of the stick, comes from. Whether you were interested in mathematics at school or not, you'll have learned about the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagoras was hailed as a genius in his lifetime, and he was but the famous theory that bears his name wasn't actually his. In fact, all of his concepts were familiar to the Babylonians more than 1,000 years before Pythagoras was even born. We know that because of this 3,800-year-old clay disc in Yale's Babylonian collection. Experts think that the cuneiform tablet is the ancient equivalent of homework and that the equations on it were etched by a child learning math. One of the sums calculates the square root of two to an impressive six decimal places. We don't know about you, but we know that we couldn't do that without the assistance of a calculator. Among the 45,000 artifacts in Yale's Babylonian collection, you'll also find Babylonian dictionaries, world lists, and attempts to preserve an even older 
dying language for future generations. The civilization was centuries ahead of its time, and these formulas should be taught as Babylonian theorem in school. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!